So the Ultra Ball and I have come to the conclusion that Dark World is actually a good deck. <laughs> I couldn't even say it with a straight face. Oh my God. The deck is still hot garbage. It's just not as garbage as I thought it was. Let's dive on into it, shall we? <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain. All that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder currently set at 1,039 subscribers. Almost 40 new people sliding on into the channel. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, this is my humble abode, and uh, we talk about boo-boo stains and decks that are booty booty butt cheeks. So if you like all that, be sure to stick around. I really do appreciate it all of the support. I usually try to say what number of subscribers I'm at at the beginning of the video because it doesn't actually show on YouTube anymore and I like to just be transparent. Um, so yeah, also thank you all so much for all the love and support and spirit bomb energy on my community post. If you didn't see it, I uh, got ghosted on a date because the woman's probably a bitch. So yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh player gets dumped before he even, you know, it's a date, so, ha <laughs> ha. Uh, and I, I drove o over an hour to the destination. Oh, Billy. <laughs> <sighs> that's, that's why you just gotta do fucking monk mode in 2022 and just make your money, date whoever you want, be a Jeff Bezos. <laughs> anyway, besides the point, other than that, you might as well just play Dark World and just have fun with your life. So here's the thing. Um, I've been testing Dark World. <laughs> Oh, uh, my hypocritical dog ass. So here's the thing. We've been testing it. I, I'm using MST.TV's build as a base point. Um, and the thing is, is that the deck does have a lot of gas. It's got a lot more gas than what I thought the deck was even capable of, to be honest with you. You know, I remember back in the day, like 2011, 2012, playing Dark World when it first came out with the original structure deck. And we were playing a lot of things like Drag Down to the Grave, Card Destruction, Mind Crush before it was ruled differently to where you could just call whatever you want, you know, call Beaver Warrior, you get the hand knowledge, but then you get to ditch a Dark World, like let's say Grappa, and then pop a card on the opponent's field or ditch a Silva and get the special summon, you know, whatever it was that you needed, right? And so we are no longer playing stuff like that, but instead now with the introduction of the Danger cards, there's a whole new way to build this deck. You know, you're not having to play tour guide to cheese out a brow and make a rank three XC. Like that's just not really a thing anymore. That's just too slow. There's no reason to be doing that anyway, unless like you're going to do that and then go into muckraker to get a fiend from the grave. Then you can't use muckraker as a link summon link material anyway that turn. But all that besides the point, um, the deck, at least at face value, has a lot of gas. This new version of Dark World, though, again, I'm using MST TV's build as the basis point, like where I'm going to start learning the deck and all that. Uh, it can brick. Does it brick as bad as like old school Dark Worlds? I would say no, uh, but the way that you play it is much different. You know, when the deck pops off, you're, you're off the races. You're literally playing your turn for like 15 minutes because a lot of the Dark World cards, I would say like 95% of them, if not maybe like 99%, are not hard once per turn. So Grapha, every time it goes to Grave, you bounce something that's not Grapha, summon it out. Uh, same goes for Rainbow. Like these, some of these new cards, as well as all the old cards, are not once per turns, which is insane. You can do some hand looping shenanigans with Silva because Silva says when it's discarded from the hand of the graveyard by a card effect, you can special summon it. Then if it's by an opponent's card effect, you can take two cards from their hand, put them on the bottom of the deck in any order. So you give them Sorelli, you use Sorelli's effect uh, to ditch the Silva, then you summon out Silva, and then the opponent loses two cards out of their hand. So there's applications like that that make the deck seem very good. Now, if you brick or, you know, you don't hit well off your dangers because of the RNG, which does make the deck fun because it's like RNG. It's like tier in that regard. You've got some RNG factor in that. Uh, you know, you're maybe ending hopefully on a fusion, maybe a graph or two, maybe like, I don't know, a Saryuja Skuldra. Like I had one hand I was testing earlier where like I I ran out of gas and like I ended on Saryuja with double Grapha with the Puppeteer in the back row set, along with like a Gates of the Dark World. So the Puppeteer is basically a call by the grave for three cards in the grave. So that's pretty good. Um, a session as a quick play fusion spell is disgusting. Um, like that, that, that card's just insane. The, the, the fact that Dark Worlds now have access to an El Shadal fusion is bonkers. I mean, at face value, 
Like I was thinking that that's not very good, but Jesus Christ, like that's amazing. You set up a board of dark worlds and you just swing with everything. And like, if it's not enough for game, you just tell the opponent to eat your ass as you play a session and, you know, ditch a card from your hand or banish a dark from grave, banish the graph on your field, drop out the dark Lord, overlord, gonna whoop your ass, dark world monster. And then with the field spell up, he's 3,500 attack. Like, what? <laughs> like, it's it's insane. Now, that's all, you know, going first, building your board and shit, right? Going second, yes, the deck does struggle. You know, if you lose that die roll game one and you're not going first, you're going to have a hard-ass fucking time because, you know, how, how do you beat the tier board? Like, again, I was asking this question in my Do Not Buy the Dark World Structure Deck video, and that's why I was telling people in the comment section of that video, watch the video till the fucking end so you actually understand the point that I'm making. Most people watch, like, two minutes and they're like, oh, he's just being an asshole. You know, dislike and leave. No, relax your anus, watch the video to the end. And I made the point, how do you beat tier if you do not go first? And again, I'm asking that question here. How do you beat tier game one when you don't go first? You have to basically rely on the fact that the tier player does not mill well, which they're probably gonna mill well just because of ratios and you know mathematical calculations, how they build their deck and the things that they can hit, things like that. And then, you know, either misplaying or just making a suboptimal board that, you know, maybe a couple of danger Bigfoot ditches and Graffa ditches, you can start popping cards and maybe see the light at the end of the tunnel. But if you brick, you might as well just go to the next game at that point. Side deck to go first, throw in Light Force Sword and Skill Drain, because I'm throwing in Light Force Sword, because I'm only playing at my locals at this point. I don't have any more regionals coming up anytime soon. So I'm just going to be cheesy and just play Light Force Sword, rip a couple cards out of the opponent's hand with Silva. That's besides the point. Um, but, you know, you play to go first. You know, you use the Skill Drains, and you're, you know, off to the races. And in that regard, Dark World is cool. You know, should you maybe build your deck to go second? No, because then you're going to run into a lot more bricks. If you lose the die roll and you're not going first game one, then you know what? That's Yu-Gi-Oh. It is what it is. But the fact that you can still kind of go second, depending on how you open and how the opponent builds their board, depending on how many negates they have, you may stand a chance. You know, Nibiru's not seeing any play right now. The only time you're going to see hand traps is if the opponent's playing pure sprite and they're playing about 12 to 15 hand traps. You won't see Droll, but you'll see things like Ash, maybe Valor, probably Imperm, maybe Ghost Bell, um, you know, things like that, that you need to be prepared for. Um, and honestly, Dark World can play through a lot of that if they have enough gas. You know, you have to keep in mind, you're playing danger cards. You're using monsters that aren't hard once per turns. You know, the new Genta monster that searches the field spell is not a once per turn. So you open up multiple copies, you can ditch them to get multiple copies of the field spell. Genta effect, ditch to get the field spell. Oh, you're going to ash me? I'm just going to do it again. Like, eat my ass. <laughs> you know, so you do have that going for you. Um, and the field spell too, keep in mind, is like Runic Fountain. You activate Gates of the Dark World, use the effect draw card. You can activate another Gates of the Dark World and just do the same thing. So there is a lot going for Dark Worlds. Do I feel that it could be a tier one deck right now? Absolutely not. It's a tier zero format. At locals, depending on what your you know local metagame is, you stand a chance. You know, if you walk into Oblivion Games in Tampa, Florida, which is all competitive pro players, they're all playing Sprite, Exosister, Tier, you name it, you're going to get your booty hole destroyed before you even walk in the door if you're playing Dark World. Regional YCS, same thing. 2023, like I said in my original video, in 2023, when we get a ban list, then yes, I believe that Dark World does have a chance. Keep in mind, too, that the majority of the Dark World monsters are fiends, right? So any set, whether it's a side set or a core booster set, that has, like, generic fiend support, Dark World benefits from. Hence why they're playing Muckraker from the Underworld, because it's generic fiend support. Locks into fiends, which kind of hurts you, because not everything's a fiend. But to at least have that extension play to finish setting up a board, since it only says for the rest of the turn you're locked into fiends, if you're almost done setting up your board, then it doesn't even matter. So... These are just my initial thoughts on Dark World. The deck is very good. And I think if you're making an investment in for the long haul, you know, after we get into 2023 with Photon Hypernova and, you know, the ban list hopefully takes Tier Element out back and shoots it in the nuts. <laughs> um, I do believe that Dark World has a chance, not just on the local level, ban list pending, depending on how hard Tier gets hit, possibly a regional level too. You know, you can pants people. Maybe Dark World eventually changes up their build if Tier Element's not an issue and they start playing things like Drag Down again, Deck Devi, Eradicator, things like that. You know, and Mystic Mind's also not a thing for any deck to worry about now. So, you know, you don't have to be adjusting just for one card in the meta. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm, I'm honestly impressed with Dark World. Is the deck still garbage? Bah, absolutely, yes. It is still a hot pile of garbage. It's just not the total dog water garbage that I thought it was. So people are still going to probably hate on me for that. But look, 
I'm being blunt. I'm being honest with you. Once we get out of a tier zero format, I think that that will change a lot. You know, I'm an honest entertainer. I'm not going to BS you. So guys, thanks you. Thanks you. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.